And so when people are coming in with a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, especially if it's early on, I always recommend people getting on treatment because it can really help them function on a day-to-day -day basis. It helps improve their tremors, their stiffness, their slowness. So Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder uh, that affects patients typically as they get a little older in life. Uh, the average age is about 60 when people are diagnosed. They can get diagnosed younger as well as older. But what happens is, is there's a neurochemical in the brain called dopamine that for some reason gets depleted in the brain. And once that dopamine level gets to a certain level, then patients will start developing symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, kind of the four major ones that we consider when we're diagnosing someone is a resting tremor. So patients will have a tremor typically in either hand or sometimes in the leg that is present while they're resting, such as watching TV or relaxing on a couch, that typically then will go away when they go to move their hand. And that's the more typical classic type of tremor with Parkinson's disease. People also will get what's called bradykinesia or slowness to movement. So it's harder for them to get to one place to another inside their house or home or outside. Uh, patients can have increased tone or their muscles get stiffer as well as as the disease, disease progresses, they can have problems with uh, balance and they have problems with falls. So those are the major motor manifestations that we see when we're diagnosing patients with Parkinson's disease. You know, there's a lot of unknown about Parkinson's disease. There is some genetic component of Parkinson's disease, and we think that approximately around 10% or maybe a little less of patients that have Parkinson's disease, that it, there's a genetic component to it. Typically, the patients that have a genetic form of Parkinson's disease get diagnosed before the age of about 44. So there are some individuals that'll be in their mid-30s getting diagnosed um, that'll be more of a hereditary factor. People that more typically get it as in the older ages or advancing ages, we don't know why those patients get Parkinson's disease. There's been some implications that it may be associated with the higher risks in associations with pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, um, but there's not anything yet that's been definitive um, shown to cause Parkinson's disease. We do know that advancing age is an increased risk for developing Parkinson's disease. So there have been studies that have shown that, that men are at a slightly higher risk than women of developing Parkinson's disease. The ratios are about one and a half to men to about one woman. Um, and then the incidence uh, nationwide in the United States of having Parkinson's disease is about 500,000. Uh, patients. So it's a very fairly common uh, disorder. As far as treatment options go, unfortunately there's no cure for Parkinson's disease. There's lots of research going on right now to try to find a cure for Parkinson's disease. The medications that we have available help to restore that chemical called dopamine in the brain and allow people to move better. Um, so there are different types of medications that we will use to treat Parkinson's disease. In some of the patients that have had more progressive Parkinson's disease, we will also refer them for deep brain stimulation. Uh, the medicines that we use for Parkinson's disease, uh, there's a medicine called Cinemet or Carbidopa Levodopa, which is an oral form of dopamine, so the chemical that I discussed earlier that becomes depleted in the brain. When people take Cinemet, it's like taking oral dopamine. So their symptoms of tremor, stiffness, slowness can improve while taking that medicine. The other big, other big class of medicines that we use for Parkinson's disease are what are called the dopamine agonists. So there's a medicine called Meripex or Requip, uh, which actually work in the brain kind of like dopamine, and it also helps patients with those symptoms to function better while taking those medications. Then there are some other medicines that we use that are called MOEB inhibitors, uh, which is a medicine called Azelect or Selegiline or Zelopar that have been shown to possibly help with symptoms as well as help to provide some neural protection for Parkinson's disease, although those studies yet have to be uh, carefully, carefully reviewed and um, evaluated. The other thing is, is there's a lot of treatments on the horizon that are coming out for Parkinson's disease. So I always tell people, I think the way we treat Parkinson's now is going to be a lot different than the way we treat it 10 years down the road. Um, for example, the Cinemet medicine that I was talking about earlier, they're trying to formulate a patch now that people maybe could wear a patch. 
or they're thinking about implantation devices where people can have uh, Cinemet uh, continuously infused into the spinal cord, not th into the spinal fluid, that they can have continuous uh, treatment with that medication. There's gene therapies that are being evaluated, vaccination studies that are being done right here on the campus, um, stem cell transplants that are being evaluated. So there's kind of a lot of exciting research that's going on for Parkinson's as well. The Nebraska Medical Center has an amazing uh, department of neurology, uh, both in academic and private practice. We have a, a very good group of neurosurgeons that help with the implantation of the deep brain stimulators, and, and it's a great, a great center to go to if you have Parkinson's disease.